بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد أما بعد قال الله عز وجل في كتاب آخر بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قل إن كنتم قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا In the previous discussions regarding the life and the great life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we started to talk about the infancy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the after the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the time when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was growing up in the household of Halima Sa'diya radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Halima Sa'diya radiyallahu ta'ala anha had the privilege of hosting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in her house with her husband and her milk son or with her son, the milk brother, the foster brother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for approximately four years. In that time, she noticed many blessings, many miracles that came into the house because of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, such as the the milk in the she camel, the speed and the strength of the donkey, and other blessings in the household of Halima Sa'diya radiallahu ta'ala anha. Therein we started or we spoke about one of the most famous incidents that took place four times in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First starting in the household of Halima Sa'diya radiallahu ta'ala anha which was known as the splitting of the chest. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was grazing the animals in the field, Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam and Mikail alayhi salatu wa salam, they descended from the heavens uh, with a gold dish, with a golden color dish, wherein they went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cut his chest open, they took out the blessed heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cleaned it, removed the, the black slither, cleaned it in zamzam, and thereafter placed the chest back, the heart back in the chest of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At this point, of course, Halima Sa'diya radiallahu ta'ala anha became anxious, became worried, and she took her back to Nabi, to her, to his mother, Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, back into Makkah al-Mukarrama. And Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha took her, took her son in, kept him for some period of time, and she left this world at the young age, or when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was at the young age of six years old. And she was buried in the place of Abuwa. And this, way, this is where we had reached in the last discussion. Where Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha had left this world and left Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam orphaned and motherless at the age of six. She was buried in a place called Abuwa or she passed away in the place called Abuwa in a village called Abuwa. And there the bondswoman Umm Ayman Barakah radiallahu ta'ala anhu Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha had received in her, in inheritance after the demise of Abdullah, the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala an, was accompanying Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his mother Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha on this journey. After the burial, then Umm Ayman Barakah radiallahu ta'ala an took Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back to Makkah al mukarramah we mention one point which is to be mentioned again as it is a beautiful point to remember that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum they mention that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only got to spend a few moments with his birth mother with Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha approximately two and a half, three years with 
Amina radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And the other years he spent with Halima Sa'diya radiyallahu ta'ala anha. But the love that he had for his mother Amina radiyallahu ta'ala an was so great that the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala an were astonished. And they did not believe it to be so great because he did not get much time with her. He did not, he did not know her. But on one occasion when they were, when they were on a journey, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped over in a village. And he went to the gravesite and he started weeping profusely at, at the gravesite. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum around Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not know whose gravesite this was. Did not know why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was weeping profusely. But after or because of the weeping profusely of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because of the emotions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum present, they started weeping and they started crying as well. Not knowing why. After Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finished, he turned to the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum and he, he mentioned that now <coughs> the forbiddenness that we had, the prohibition that we had for visiting grave sites, for going to the graveyard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has lifted this. And it was told that this was the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mother Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started to cry profusely approximately 50 years later. So the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum knew the deep love that they had. So this point that was mentioned last week as well was, is, is a point that should be mentioned often. That the love, the deep love that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had for his mother even though he did not know her. So a point to learn or a lesson to learn from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, is how one treats his mother. How one shows love to his mother, how one shows respect to his mother, even though she has left this world or she is still with us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the age of six was brought back to Makkah al-Mukarramah with Umm Ayman Barakah radiallahu ta'ala anha. Umm Ayman radiallahu ta'ala anha took Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his grandfather Abdul Muttalib and Abdul Muttalib took care of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from now on. Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, loved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam greatly. And he kept him with him at all times. Abdul Muttalib, being the leader of the tribe, being the leader of Quraysh, being a man of status, place where the Kaaba is, Makkah, under the shade of the Kaaba, Abdul Muttalib, being the leader, had his own specific place. As for example, we have the Musalla in the Masjid, which is known for the Imam. Abdul Muttalib being the leader of the tribe, he had his own specific place in front of the Kaaba in the Haram and under the shade of the Kaaba. A special mat used to be placed down for Abdul Muttalib for him to sit, sit on. And no one dared to let alone sit, but to touch that mat. No one dared to let alone sit or come by, they would come and uh, be around that mat. Because they knew that this was the place of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the leader of the tribe. However, Abdul Muttalib, when he would sit on this mat, when he would sit on this place, he would call one person. And this was Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would call him to his mat to sit next to him. Or sometimes without, in, without his presence, in, in, when his presence was not there, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sit near this mat or on this mat. The children of Abdul Muttalib would not even come close to this mat. They knew that they were not allowed to come close to this mat. They were not allowed to sit on their father's mat. And they would tell Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they would encourage Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would pull Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam away from this mat and tell, them that, tell him that you should not sit on this mat. But Abdul Muttalib, they would, he would tell his own children that leave him to be. He is allowed to sit on this mat. He has a privilege and honor of sitting on this mat because I know in the future he will be of a great status. Abdul Muttalib knew that his grandson will be of a high status in the future. He understood this from the dreams that he had beforehand. He understood this from the point when he named Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Makkah al-Mukarramah. So he, he would always keep Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam close by. 
and uh, he would always defend Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the other tribe members and with, with his own children. Abdul Muttalib on occasions would send Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to, to carry out some errands. And when Abdul Muttalib would do this, he knew that he is sending him out for a purpose. He knew that he was sending Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this small child, out for a purpose, to do some tasks. But Abdul Muttalib, he would go and start performing tawaf. As soon as he would send Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out to do this work, to do these errands, he would, say, he would start performing tawaf. And during the tawaf, people would hear that he is reciting a specific couplet, a specific poem. Ya Rabbi, ruddahu wastani' indi, aba, indi yadan, rudda ilayya rakibay muhammadan. Ya Rabbi, ruddahu wastani' indi yadan, rudda ilayya rakibay muhammadan. Oh Allah, return Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my conveyance to me. Oh Lord, return him to me and do me a great favor. This was the dua, the couplet of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he would make at the time in tawaf when he would send his, his grandson out to do work and tasks. This was the love that he had for him. This was the care that he had for him. And people would, would feel astonished, especially those visiting the, the, the Haram and the Kaaba. They would ask around that, who is this person? Why is he making such a specific dua? So they would be told that this is Abdul Muttalib, the leader of the tribe. And he's making this dua for his grandson Muhammad sallallahu Abdul Muttalib will become happy. And he would say time and time again, that I will, now I will not let you out of my sight. Now I will not let you go. After some time, approximately two years, Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was of the age of eight, he left this world. He passed away. There are differences of opinions how old he was. Some mentioned that he was 82 years old. Some mentioned that Abdul Muttalib was 85 years old, 95 years old. 110 years old and 120 years old that he lived a long life and he lived, left this world and he was buried in a place called Hajun. Before passing away, Abdul Muttalib instructed the blood brother of Abdullah, the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Talib, to take care of his grandchild, to take care of his nephew. But giving wasiyah, giving advice, urging Abdul, uh, 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 Abu Talib. Abdul Muttalib gave him guardianship and he said that make sure you take care of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bring him up with great affection, with great care and show immense amounts of love because in the future you will also witness if you are to stay alive that he will become a great man. He will become a, become a man of status. And further on, Abdul, Abu, Abu Talib lived many years after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received nubuwa, after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received prophethood. Umm Ayman radiyallahu ta'ala an at the demise of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that when the funeral, when the janazah of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was being carried along, was being taken through the streets Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a young age boy at the age of eight years old, was walking behind his grandfather, was walking behind the janazah, and he was weeping and he was crying because of his loss. Umm Ayman radiallahu ta'ala anha mentions that she saw this with her own eyes. That when the janazah, when the, when the body of Abdul Muttalib was being carried along, was being walked out to his burial site, to his grave site, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was walking behind crying because of his loss. And thereafter, after the burial, Abu Talib, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the brother of, of, of the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, took care of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, in the next discussion, we will discuss the life of Abu Talib, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanallah.